Welcome, welcome. This video is all about how to replace that filament feed gear in your FlashForge Adventure 3 3D printer. Let's start out with the different types of gears that we'll be looking at. 40 tooth brass, 50 tooth steel, and the original. Gotta remember for this that your outer diameter is 11 millimeters and your inner is 5. So first things first, what tools we're going to need? We're going to need a 2.5mm hex, 2 and 1.5, and a Phillips screwdriver. Now let's first remove the side cover from our Adventure 3 to expose the feed gear assembly that is located right behind on the top left. There it is in all its glory. We'll take our 2.5mm hex wrench, locate our mounting screws for our stepper motor and also the spring release on the clutch. We'll start by removing the spring release clutch from the stepper motor. Now this is a shoulder bolt and once you remove it you want to make sure you put it off to the side and don't lose it. So now that we've removed that we're going to want to hold it in place along with the spring because we don't want to lose that spring and gently pull it out while holding the spring. And if you're careful, you should be able to retrieve it in two pieces. If not, and it slides down into the underneath, just turn the machine upside down and you should be able to get it back out the top. Next, we're gonna remove the top two screws of our stepper motor very, very carefully. Uh, they'll either come out or they will uh, stay on your wrench. I like to put my finger in behind there to make sure that the motor itself doesn't drop out or anything strange. Next thing we got to do is remove these two Phillips screws that are screwed into the plastic housing of the printer itself. Again with all of our hardware let's make sure that when we take it out that we store it safely off to the side so we don't want to lose any of it. When you're removing the motor or sliding it from the back, you want to be careful that the two parts come out nice and easily like that. And if you uh, manage to remove your two mounting screws, they'll be uh, either in the housing or off to the side. So now we have a motor and we have the motor housing. Once these two are separate, you notice that there's the stepper motor wire in the back. We're going to have to disconnect that, which is fairly simple to do by hand. It just requires a gentle wiggle and it should easily separate. Now we're ready to take our motor out and separate it from the housing. Or lose a screw like that. Okay, so now we're gonna take our two millimeter uh, hex wrench and remove the backing plate of the feed gear housing from the stepper motor. Okay, now that that's off, we're going to have a look at our stepper motor. We're also going to look at the back of the housing. And there's something to notice here. There is a, a notch in the back of the plate that lines up with the notch on our stepper motor. This can only go back in one orientation so that that hole lines up with the hole on the stepper motor. Okay, so here's our stepper motor. And there's our original feed gear on the motor. What we're going to need to do here is locate the Allen key or the socket cap screw that attaches, uh, secures the feed gear onto the shaft of the stepper motor. So using our two millimeter hex key, we should just simply be able to um, remove it. Uh, this step here is fairly important and the reason I'm putting it back on is because I want to show you that the feed gear has to line up, the teeth line up with the hole almost the center of that line. So when we uh, take off our new, our old feed gear and we put our new feed gear on, we want to make sure that we line those those teeth up. It's fairly important and also it tells us where the orientation is going to be with our uh, Allen hex head there. So here's the original feed gear. It has the 11 millimeter outside diameter even at the teeth and a 5 millimeter inside diameter. And if we have a look at our stepper motor, you'll see that the shaft has a flat spot on it. And that's where you want your set screw to grab in so that we can get some good uh, uh, rotation out of our motor. For this video, or uh, this instance, I'm going to be using the 40 tooth brass tooth gear. I've used the 50 tooth steel one 
and it works great and so does the 42 uh, brass. Um, it's a little less aggressive than the steel one. The steel one will, um, will dig right into your filament so the brass one uh, should be uh, a good match for this uh, time around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the brass feed gear onto the shaft of the stepper motor. Um, you'll notice now I'm using my 1.5 millimeter uh, hex wrench in order to adjust the two set screws on this feed gear. We want that, that set screw to line, the top set screw, or at least one of those set screws, to line up with the flat spot on our shaft. Notice how I'm not tightening it, I'm making it uh, just slightly um, so enough so that I can turn and rotate the shaft but also slide the gear up and down. So what I want to do is line that back up uh, with where that hole was. Now see if I put the, the, the feed the new gear on the opposite way, this would be much more difficult but I also might um, not be able to get as much grip. So now that I've got it semi-aligned, I'm going to pull the housing back off. Uh, with my finger at the back I'm going to hold the feed gear in place and I'm going to tighten the two set screws, one onto the flat spot of the shaft and the other onto the side. Now that that's done, I'm going to give it a quick turn to make sure that I don't have any rubbing or anything strange happening between the gear and the housing of the stepper. And I'm going to place that back onto the stepper motor to make sure my alignment is good. And it looks good to me, it's nice and tight, so I'm going to put the cap screw back into the side of, to mount the housing back to the stepper motor. I just pointed to the wrong hole actually in this video. Um, the other hole, the hole beside it is tapered and that one is not. So that's how you know if you got it in the right hole or not is it won't go in to the hole that is not tapered. So we are now ready to put our motor back together with our housing and to do this what we're going to do is uh, put the motor in behind first and then gently slide the housing assembly in front of it. And once we get it in all we need to do is then reach around back very carefully and slide our stepper motor into uh, the socket of the holder. This can be a bit tricky at first, but you've uh, got a pretty good handle there with the new feed gear and you should just be able to pull it through. So now what we're going to do is take our first screw and place it in the top right corner and, and what we're going to do is um, get that just started and not super tight so that we can get the other screws in there uh, to hold it down as well. The scarp part can be a bit tricky, but I find a few tips are if I hold the screw with my finger and the 2.5 millimeter Allen key at the same time, I'm able to usually get a good good grip on it and uh, and get it started in there. Okay, perfect. Now we've got ourselves a good start, and we are ready to mount the remaining screws. Alright, so we got our, our one screw tightened in and now we'll add the remaining screws to continue mounting the stepper motor to the housing. So we're going to just tighten it up a little more to make sure that we got it in there. Perfect. Alright, now we'll just sort of semi-align those two holes there and we'll take our Phillips mounting screws and begin to mount the housing again. I do this uh, to allow a little bit of movement in the stepper motor still. Just having one screw in there uh, to hold it in place is all we're going to need now because we may need to move it around a bit more and if the screw is too tight it'll be just too hard to get the other screws in at this point. grab the other screw and place it in the top. Again I like to hold the uh, 
the screw and the screwdriver end so that I don't lose the screw or drop it while I'm placing it in there. The other mounting screw for the stepper, or bolt, pardon me. need a little bit of extra push there we go now it's not too tight just yet okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the idler cl idle clutch and the spring and the shoulder bolt so I'm gonna slide the shoulder bolt into the clutch assembly and again like I did taking off it's hard to see here but I'm holding the spring with one finger placing the idler in with the other and then I'm going to tighten that screw well, holding the spring in place. And because this is a shoulder bolt, um, over tightening it shouldn't be a, cause too much grief. So now with the spring, I hold it into the slot and I just pull down and push it in and it should just snap right into place. Um, I make that sound easy but uh, it should just work that easily for you. We can't forget about that stepper motor wire plug at the back so you should simply be able to reach back there by hand and plug that back into the stepper motor assembly. And now you have yourself a brand new feed gear here that's it for this tutorial. I hope it helps and happy printing.